Okay, can you hear my voice? Clear? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Okay, good. Okay, so let me share the slide. The topics for today's lesson is the wave and sound. Okay, wave and sound. Right. Um, so, in this topic, we will learn about the type of wave. Okay. Wave on a string. Okay. And the sound wave. The sound intensity together with the intensity level. Okay. The Doppler effects. And lastly, the standing wave. Okay, the superposition, and lastly, the standing wave. All right? So, let's start with the types of wave. Okay, but uh, at least you should know about what is wave. Okay, wave is actually a disturbance, okay, a disturbance that propagates from one place to another. That means we have some disturb uh, disturbance, uh, pengacau, ataupun uh, yang mengacau, uh, ataupun uh, some things like we call as... Um, uh, disturbance, the disturb, uh, the the flows of the, uh, let's say in this case, uh, wave that propagates from one place to another. Okay, propagates means uh, moving forward. Dia akan bergerak. Okay, ke hadapan atau ke belakang. That means it propagates. Okay, propagating. Wave propagates with well-defined speed. Okay, of course. Okay, it comes with the speed V. Okay. That determined by the properties of the material which through which they travel. Okay, the uh, wave will travel with some speed. Okay, but uh, the speed will be determined in terms of the properties of the materials that uh, they actually encounter. For example, if the uh, wave is traveling in water, okay, will be different. Okay, we will have a different speed. Okay. Uh, compared to wave that travels in solid, because water is it falls under liquid. Okay, if the if the wave is travels um, through solid or through gas, uh, then it will have a different speeds. Okay, so in addition, wave carries some energy, and we can actually see it from like say, okay, a ripples in the uh, surface of the water like this. Okay, we can see that at least if you try to take one point, one point, let's say you look at this figure. Okay, you take one point here that you can see that this point is actually moving forward. Okay, moving forward. It's spreading from all over the place. So that means this point onwards, okay, uh, when, you leave, when you return to this, uh, this point, okay, these figures. Okay, the figure C, okay, let's say this one is A, B, C, and D. Okay, so if you drop some stone or some, okay, that means you create some ripples on the uh, water surface. And then if you look at, let's say you, you take one point, okay, you take one point, let's say point number one, okay, and then you can say that this point is actually moving, okay, propagates. It propagates from one point to another point. So you can say that this point is actually moving forward. Okay. That means the wave is propagating forward. Okay. And lastly, you can see at, at figure D that the ripples effect have gone. Okay. Because it takes some energy to create some ripples. And then afterwards, the energy will be gone and will be uh, decreasing. All right. So, there are two types of wave that we will uh, learn. Uh, first is the transverse wave. So, what is the transverse wave? Okay. This is the easiest type of wave. Okay. I could say that this one is not uh, the easiest type. But uh, try to visualize. Uh, if you want to visualize it. Okay. Uh, the transverse wave will have some properties. That is, if you take one individual particle, one individual particle, let's say you take one individual particle here, let's say this is your, your particle, okay? Let's say you are holding some uh, uh, marble or guli, yeah? Pegang guli dekat sini. Take one, one marble and then you try to, um, you try to uh, attach the marbles, okay? Attach the, 
it to some a cord over here, and this cord is tied at the end okay, of the wall. Okay, at the end of wall. Okay, and then if you try to uh, okay, give some displacement to the particles, that means the displacement uh, in order to create some wave. Okay, the that displacement of the guli or the marbles. Okay, is actually will be always uh, perpendicular, always perpendicular, always perpendicular to the directions of motion. Let's say if the directions of motion is going to the right, okay, let's say if the directions of motion is going to the right, that particles is actually moving ups and downs or left to right, okay. You try to shake this thing up and down and it can create some ripples okay it can create some wave so this is what we call as wave okay create some wave gelombang okay with some wave and then uh, you can see this is some uh, uh, easiest examples from the transverse wave that means the propagating uh, the wave will propagate to the right but your motion is just up and down. Okay, your motion is just up and down. Okay, that means from this part and this uh, propagation is 90 degrees. So this is what we call the displacement of individual particle is at right ang angles. Okay, or maybe you want to try it differently. Okay, you tie one more. Okay. Guli, uh, ujongi. Okay. And try to uh, give some displacement to that individual particles left to right. Okay. Gerak ke kiri ke kanan. And the propagates, the, the, um, the wave. Okay. You can create some wave, uh, individual wave that gives some, uh, pro that propagates from left to right. Okay. So, it's like a motions of a snake. Like this. Okay. So, it move from left to right, but the propagating is still going, direction is still going forward, okay? The directions of, let's say this is the, uh, the, the, the head of the snake, okay? The snake is moving like a transverse wave. So, that means, okay, if you take one point on the snake itself, okay, and that, that point is going uh, left and right, Okay, but you can see that the wave that created by the motions of the snake is still going forward. Okay, masih lagi nampak seolah-olah dia bergerak ke hadapan. And it still creates some 90 degrees from the directions of motions. So this is what we call transverse wave. That means the displacement of individual particles. Again, individual particles in this case, okay, saya gunakan gu, guli. Okay, marbles. And of course, this is the examples of the transverse wave, which means we have light, light, okay? Light is also a wave, and also the radio wave, okay? Gelombang radio. Gelombang cahaya, gelombang radio. Right. So the other types of wave is the longitudinal wave. So what is the difference between transverse and so longitudinal wave? In a longitudinal wave, the displacement of individual particles is parallel to the directions of motion of the wave motions. Let's say if the propagation of the wave is going forward, okay, that way. Okay, so let's say you took one point, one point, okay, one point. So that means the individual particles is parallel. That means it's still moving here. Okay, parallel. That means it still can, it, it, it must follow the propagations of the wave. Okay, the, um, let's say the wave is going forward, eh? going forward to the right, and the particles is also oscillating. Okay, parallel to that direction. Parallel means Okay, dia masih lagi bergerak. Okay, sama arah. Sama arah dengan pergerakan wave. So, dengan cantik kata lain, 
Okay, in other words, okay, um, the propagations of the from the longitudinal wave. Uh, that means, okay, kita boleh tengok dalam pergerakan um, worm ataupun uh, ulat beluncas contoh dia. Okay, kita boleh tengok pada pergerakan ulat beluncas. Uh, macam mana dia bergerak kan? Kita dapat dia punya one of the uh, abdomen dia akan gerak ikut arah sama ke depan ke belakang ke depan ke belakang untuk menghasilkan pergerakan ke hadapan. Nah itu maksud dia the displacement of individual particle is parallel to the directions of motions. And of course the examples of longitudinal wave is sound. And we will uh, discuss a lot of longitudinal wave throughout uh, this chapter. Okay because the topic is about wave and sound. Okay that means uh, they want you to know about wave but in the, at the same time they want to emphasize on the sound the sound wave to be precise the sound wave. so you can see here if you put some speaker diaphragm okay speaker diaphragm eh? diaphragm yang ada di dalam speaker tu untuk to create the oscillation so that you can hear some sound right okay so if you uh, actually try to imagine that the diaphragm uh, have some particles of okay you can see that Okay, the particles we create some compression and rarefaction. Okay, uh, compress, maksudnya at one point, uh, particles tu akan duduk rapat-rapat, compress and at some point dia akan duduk jarang-jarang. Okay, so it's actually an air molecule, like an air molecule. Here is a very dense air molecule. This one is, is a, um, less dense compared to the uh, on um, the position at the uh, compression part. Okay, so that's why uh, we can have a wave travel through the air molecule. Okay, so that's why we can hear uh, if if somebody is shouting at us okay, at the far, okay, you can still hear okay, some echoes because uh, the wave can travel from the compressions and air fractions of a uh, rare fractions of air molecule okay so in this case the longitudinal wave is sound okay the examples is sound right so what is water wave uh, as water wave passes a given point a molecule move in a roughly circular path this means that the water molecule move both vertically and horizontally okay and uh, it's actually based on our knowledge in terms of sinusoid, like a sinusoidal graph. But if you take one point, okay, you can see that the water wave uh, is just a normal wave that contain and uh, some amplitude is okay, some, uh, maybe you can call that some uh, crest or throw. Okay, this is what we call crest, okay, crest, puncha. Okay, and throw is here. Okay, puncak and lembah. Right. Alright, so in terms of wave itself, okay, I have mentioned that wave contains or uh, wave to travel with some speed. Okay, wave travel with some speed. So you should know at least uh, the combinations of speed. Okay, the combinations of speed with the frequency because uh, when tra the traveling wave is actually contained some maximum in upward displacement okay maximum in upward displacement that we can call crest or throw okay crest or throw okay yang paling tinggi is crest lah crest okay crest mid crest okay you can define that as the wave wavelength this one okay and of course from crest to crest okay we can have some lambda what is lambda? Lambda is wavelength. Okay, lambda is wavelength. What is wavelength? Panjang gelombang. Panjang gelombang. Okay, so in this here, we want to highlight that the speed of wave V will equivalent to F lambda. Very popular one. Okay, I hope that all of you still can memorize these equations from your SPM. Okay, V equals to 
F lambda. What is V? V is the speed of wave. And what is F? F is the frequency of wave. And lambda is the wave, wavelength. Right? So V is equal to F lambda. Remember, V is in meter per second. The SI unit for V is meter per second. Okay? The frequency is second negative one or hertz. And lambda is in me meter. So meter per second. Okay, but normally when we discuss about lambda, okay, we actually uh, uh, always write the lambda because lambda is very, very small. Okay, maybe in the nano region. So you can write down as a semi 700 nanometers, but it's still in meter. So that is lamb, lambda. Right? So you can see here at time t equals to zero, what will happen? I can when wave travels. This is when time t equals to uh, uh, t over four. That means t is one complete oscillation. There is a uh, one fourth, okay, one fourth of the uh, complete oscillation. One fourth of the complete oscillation. This is the half oscillation, half period, okay. Three and a half, three and a quarter period, three over four period, and also this is when times t equals to p. Period. Okay, you can see here where is actually the press and the throw. Here, okay, I shall highlight that the press is puncha, throw is the lembah. Okay, uh, so something like that lah. Okay, we call that zero. So yeah, when one try to measure the lambda is from press to press. When crest meet throw, it can give you something. When throw meet throw, okay, it can give you something. Okay, crest to crest, it gives you something else. Crest meet throw, it gives something else. Then we will see next, okay? So this is wave on the string. Okay, for those who are playing um, some um, instrument, musical instrument, okay, that contain string. For example, we have violin. We have guitar, okay, we have double bass, for example, right? All are involving string. So, you can measure some speed on wave on a string. That means it contains tension and mass. So, how to describe it? Here, okay? So, the definitions of mass per unit length. So, the speed of a wave on a string is given by F over mu. Okay, remember what is mu? Mu is m over l. This is mass and this is length. Mass per unit length. Mass per unit length. Remember mass is in k, kg while m is in meters. Okay, mass per unit length. Then you can get uh, mu and you divide it with the f divide with the mu with the square root. You can get speed. Remember, now we have a general speed. General speed is f equals to f lambda. And then we have speed of wave on a string, which v equals to the square root of f force, okay? Force against uh, mu. This one is, okay? So f can be derived from anything. So maybe mg, okay, kx, for example, right? Okay, in order to get F, because F is force, and mu is the coefficient, uh, mass per unit length. It still can give you meter per second. As we can see, the speed increases when the force increases, and the decreases when the mass increases. Okay, you can see here. When we multiply this equation, or we can multiply, we square the everything. So you can have V square equals to F over mu. Or maybe you can replace it with a V square equals to F over M over L. And then you can write down as here, V square equals to F L over M. So you can see here, when the speed increases, the force also increases. Speed and force increases. But when the force increases one, uh, just one, in, uh, one, one point, and the v velocity is increased in 
squared. Okay. Same goes to L. When L increases, then the speed also increases. But when F, when when V increases, M will be decreased. Or if the M increases, V will be the decrease. Okay, let's look at one example here. A 12 meters rope is pulled tight, tight, with a tension of 92 newton. Okay, when one end of the rope is given a tongue, maybe some, uh, you pick some, you pick the, 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 the end of the rope. So it takes about 0 0.45 seconds for the disturbance to propagate to the other end. That means it takes some time for the wave to travel from this point to this point. So it takes about 0 0.45 seconds. Maybe from this length and this time, you can find what is the V. And from V, we can have some mass. Okay, so the question is, what is the mass of the rope? Okay, the mass of the rope given by the tongue itself, given by 92 Newton. Okay, it's 92 Newton. So again, okay, we must use some equations, our general uh, uh, of uh, speed, which means we have distance 12 meters over 0 0.45 seconds. So we're going to have speed at about 27 meters per second. And you can use that uh, speed okay, to find what is the mu. And when we have mu, you can find what is m. Again, so mu is f over v square. As I'm saying, comes from the v equals to square root of f over mu. So you square every, uh, you square everything. That means v square will be equals will let do f over mu. So you bring mu to here. Or maybe you can bring f over here mu you can or maybe you can put v square to the bottom part and the mu you take it out uh, as a as a subject so mu equivalent to f over v square f is 92 and v is 27 so you can have mu as 0 0.13 kg over m and then lastly mu is equivalent to m over l m equivalent to mu l okay m equivalent to mu l and then we can have mass at equivalent to 0 0.6 seconds okay please do it together with me okay uh, you can you can punch your, your calculator together right okay so in wave we also have some reflection okay some reflection and which means when a wave reach the end of a stream it will be reflected okay reflected reflection okay if the end is fixed the reflected wave will be inverted Okay, you look at the end of the strings. Okay, this one is connected. Okay, tight. Okay, at the end of the, uh, that means the strings and the wall is joined, eh, thoroughly, uh, end to end. Okay, but if you are using some string or you maybe you can some ring, sorry ring. Okay, so you can have. Okay, look at how the wave travels. Okay, let's see here. The wave is traveling from left to right. And then when you reach at the end of, let's say, this, this one is figure A, this one is figure B. Okay, look at the figure A first. So, uh, when velocity, uh, when you have speed of the wave travels from left to right, and it comes to at the end of the fixed end of the strings. And you can have some, um, the wave that have been reflected back will be inverted. Look at how it's inverted. This one contains some crest of the wave. when And when it uh, reflected at the fixed end, the wave become true. Okay. That means you have a negative of um, amplitude with some speed. Okay, All right. And what happened when uh, look at the part uh, figure B? In the figure B, when you have some um, string connected, but not to the fixed end. Okay, not to the fixed end. But here you can see that the 
um, the string is actually can move uh, freely. Okay, free to move. So you can see that the traveling velocity, the, tra the traveling wave and in figure B will travel and reach at the end of it and then is not converted. And then whatever happens, it can reflect it. It reflected but not inverted. Okay, reflected but not inverted. This one reflected but inverted. Okay, so you can see the difference between when the wave travels with the strings, you know, uh, uh, wave travel on the strings that have fixed end and also that have uh, end that is not fixed. Okay, this one is fixed end. This one is free to move. Okay. All right. So right now, look at the sound wave again. So the sound wave are longitudinal wave similar to the wave on a slinky spring. Okay, you can look at the part of the slinky spring. Okay, maybe I have already mentioned about the caterpillar, Ula blue chest. Okay, uh, maybe some worm. Okay, will move uh, using the long, some similar to longitudinal wave. But uh, the easiest to see the longitudinal wave is using a slinky spring. This is what we call slinky spring. Okay, the slinky spring. Okay, that if you want, if you are using the slinky spring, you need to move this spring. Okay, parallel. Okay, parallel to the, uh, um, parallel to the uh, propagation. Yeah, the the motion, the, the motion of the wave. If the wave, if we wish to the wave or the spring to move forward. Okay, so we need to move this eh, in order to represent the longitudinal wave. It should move parallel, okay, parallel to the directions of the wave. So if the wave is traveling forward to the pan, okay, the slinky spring should not be uh, moving uh, up and down, kiri kanan tak. It should move forward, forward or backward, forward or backward, in order for them to move. So that's how the longitudinal wave works. Okay, a series of compression and refractions. So in a sound wave, the density and pressure of the air are the quantities that oscillates. Okay, so this is some examples using some, we can see here, okay, from this part, okay, where you put the microphone, okay, um, the, okay, it's closer to the source of the sound, you can see that these are the sinusoidal graph. That means it some it will create some ups and downs. Okay, that means one point you have compression, another point it becomes refractions. Okay, compression, expansion, maybe you can call it a, a refractions. Okay. So right now, look at the tables on the right. We have some speed of sound in various material okay i should mention here and i have already already mentioned uh, just now about the conditions of the speed of the wave when it travels through some materials it is not the same but it will depends okay very depending on the types of materials for example if wave travel in the solid will be different will have a different uh, to the speed of wave travels in liquid and gas definitely solid okay you must know solid have some atoms that is very very structured and aligned to each other but we compare to liquid and gas okay so because of that you can see here a lot of the value of the speed of sound in the material for example from this point aluminium granite steel pyrex okay copper and the copper here it is considered very very um high okay with the compare to the one that is in below part okay maybe at speed also eh? uh, at plastic also when here is in the region of okay hydrogen fresh water fresh water 20 degree fresh water zero degree and hydrogen zero degree Okay, and maybe at the helium part, 
another example. So this is solid, liquid, and gas. You can see the different type. Okay, when the wave, when the speed of sound travel in solid, the value is very high compared to speed of sound travels in liquid and gas. Merely because of the conditions of the conditions of the atom, the atom, uh, the structure of the atom, how you arrange the atom in each material, in solid, in liquid, and in gas. So because of that, the speed of sound is different in the different materials. In general, the denser the material, the faster sound travels through it. Okay, for example, okay, the density of the air is less than the density of water. So therefore, the sound speed of sound travels in uh, water is uh, higher compared to speed of sound in air. In air, under normal atmospheric pressure, remember, this is very, very good indicator. In air, under normal atmospheric pressure and temperature, the speed of sound is approximately 343 meters per second. Okay, this is a very uh, important um, value. Okay, at least you should memorize it. Okay, maybe before this you have memorized 8G equals to 9.8 meters per second square. So right now you need to know about speed of sound. That is uh, approximately 343 meters. 343. 343 meter per second. Okay. In air. Uh, definitely in air. Because if you can if you didn't put in air and then uh, the value of the speed of sound will be different. Okay, but normally we will use the speed of sound in air is three hundred and forty three meter per second. Okay. So let's look at another part. Okay, the examples. You drop a stone from rest into a well that is 7.35 meters deep. Okay, 7.35 meters deep. How long does it take for you? Hear the splash. Hear the splash. Okay, maybe you are using y equals to y naught plus v naught y t. Okay, plus half. Or minus half gt square, minus half gt square, and then this one is zero. This one is zero. So the only left is here, negative half. Okay, and you can easily uh, get the value. Okay, maybe you can write down as um, the t will have. You will get the t equivalent to one point two two seconds, regardless of the negative or positive, because in here we need. To know the time, okay, the time, and then again when you calculating a distance of the using that time, okay, because you have already have a, a, the depth of the, the depth of the uh, well, which is seven point three five, using some velocity, so you will have some times that t one t two that is zero point zero two one four. This one is considered to be, uh. One time, okay, one time. That means here is the uh, the time for the stone to drop. The time for the stone to drop. And the T2 is the time for sound to travel a distance D. A distance D starting from this point, okay, from the uh, well itself until the you reach the water level, okay. But before this, this is considered to be T1 and this one is T2. So T1 is 1.22 seconds. Okay, 1.22 seconds. And then the T2, we have 0 0.0214. So that will give you 1.24 seconds. Okay. Okay. Now we move to the next part, which means, uh, which is here. Okay. Uh, now we have some terms okay, to discuss. For example, we have loudness, okay, loudness, nyaringan, and the pitch. Okay, 
Okay, loudness, kekuatan bunyi dan uh, pitch, the kenyaringan. Uh, sorry eh, ada tukar sikit. Loudness, uh, kekuatan bunyi, berapa kuat bunyi and the pitch, uh, kenyaringan. Nyaring atau tidak bunyi. Okay, normally uh, uh, women will have some uh, very high uh, pitch compa compared to men. Okay, normally. Okay, but that depends on the conditions. Alright, so uh, loudness is what? So when sounds is relate to the intensity of the sound wave. So the intensity of the sound wave is what we call as loudness. While pitch is related to the frequency. This one related to frequency. Loud is related to intensity. So in discussing about sound, we should know some terms that can relate to uh, the fact that we should know pitching, okay, loud, loudness. Okay, the loudness is I. Intensity of the sound. Kekuatan pun. While pitch is actually frequency. Okay, we may look uh, later on. What is the difference between loudness and frequency? Okay, sound wave can, can have any frequency. The human, hear, human ear can hear some sound between 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. These are the frequency. So, as a human, eh, in human, okay, kita boleh dengar from the range of 20 hertz until 20,000 hertz. That means we are in the region of sonic here. These are the 20 hertz and the 20,000 hertz. Okay. Because uh, sound with frequency greater than 20,000 hertz, okay, this one is 20 hertz, this one is 20, 20,000 hertz. 20 hertz, 20,000 hertz. Okay. When the sound travel beyond at all, uh, greater than 20,000 hertz, it's called ultrasonic. Okay, ultrasonic. For those who can remember the ultrasonic, for example, when you, uh, maybe for the gla glassy persons, okay, the spectacles when you go to the shop, uh, the, for example, uh, to, to fix your specs, uh, they will clean your specs using some ultrasonic cleanser. Okay, you have a very, very high pitch. We have some uh, very, you can see the sound is very, very, uh, irritating uh, to your ears, okay? Irritating to your ears because the regions of that ultrasonic is beyond our ear. We cannot hear anything but it's very, very kalau kita boleh dengar pun, dia sangat uh, macam uh, menyakitkan telinga. Okay, bukan boleh dengar pun. Okay, a, that's why kalau kita tengok dalam region ultrasonic ni, okay, normally uh, we have some um, extraordinary um, animals such as bats or maybe dogs, okay, will hear that kind of region, uh, the kind of sound, okay, because it is beyond our, uh, beyond our region uh, to hear, okay, so that uh, the frequency that less than 20 hertz are called infrasonic, okay, infrasonic. So infrasonic sound is very uh, low in terms of frequency and we cannot hear beyond that but uh, according to the uh, research, okay, that region is uh, very uh, good in term, uh, for, for the whales, okay, whales. In this case, communications of wave, okay, whale, okay, whale will communicate Okay, through this region, which means a very low frequency. Okay, less than 20 hertz. Alright. So, right now, we need to okay, try to learn about the sound intensity. Okay. So, what is the sound intensity? So, the sound intensity is, again, the loudness of the sound is determined by its intensity. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, the loudness is the intensity. That means 
the amount of energy. Okay, this is very good term. The amount of energy that passes through a given area. Amount of energy that passes through a given area in a given time. Remember, it must contain time. So, in other words, okay, uh, this is what we call intensity. Intensity is energy over area times time. Energy over area times time. But remember, okay, E over T. What is E over T? Energy over time is equivalent to power. So that's why the intensity is given by power over area. Power is in what? And area is in meter square. What per meter square is the unit for intensity? Which intensity? Intensity. Intensity. Sound intensity. Okay, this is what we call as sound intensity. The value of the sound intensity or the equations for the sound intensity is the power per unit area. Or the SI unit is watt per meter square. You can put that W capital watt per meter square. This is the unit for sound intensity. Energy as a, uh, in, the in the particle area uh, uh, and passes through at a given time. So that is what we call as intensity. Okay, let's look at this very uh, special creature. Okay, bat. Okay, we can say that, okay, um, for a human being, manusia, and animals, is um, contain some vocal cord. Okay, uh, contain some vocal cord. Okay, well, maknanya ada, ada vocal suara, ada peti suara. Peti suara is the source of the sound. Okay, in physics, we call that as the source of the sound. And at one point, so this is our intensity. The intensity is power per unit area. So which area? So normally, when we're discussing about the living things, human, maybe uh, some bats, okay? When you say source of sound, so it comes from the vocal cord. So that this vocal cord is represented by a dot line. A dotted, okay, satu dot, satu titik. So, di titik ini kalau kita kebesarkan dia lagi, dia ialah seolah-olah macam sphere, bentuk dia macam sphere. Okay, ini kita kita buat lah, kita tak pernah tengok kan, kita punya vocal cord, but it, we just assume that our vocal cord is in sphere. Okay, so that's why, okay, when you took uh, the surface area of the sphere, surface area of the sphere is given by by 4 pi r square. Okay. Remember, surface area of sphere. 4 pi r square. Not a volume, surface area. Surface area. 4 pi r square. Okay. Just outside of it. Okay, and then the value is 4 pi r squared. Okay, and then this is, let's say, the intensity. Okay, for example, this uh, situation, this bat, okay, will, uh, it will travel using some sound. Okay, using sound from its, uh, in the region of um, ultrasonic because it's beyond 20,000. So that's how a uh, bat can travel in the dark. Because it's creating some sound, and that sound will uh, reflect it back to, uh, to the bat, so that the bat will know uh, it reach uh, it already reached the walls of the cave, maybe in the dark. Okay, so that's why, or maybe because of that, the wall uh, never uh, attempt to hit with another bat because it always producing sound. So that when it creates a sound, that sound will be reflected back by, by others. Okay. It will echo back so this, the bat will know it reached some level. It reached some point K. Then turn around. Right? So that's how the bat will be able to hunt uh, in the dark. Okay. So the intensity 
we have here, uh, if the bat is trying to catch this uh, moth or butterflies, um, so we have two distance, okay? Butterfly number one, we, uh, the bat is R1, and the butterfly number two is R2. That means it contains some two distance, okay? So how to calculate the intensity of both, um, let's say, uh, the intensity uh, creating uh, created by the bats towards the butterflies number one and also number two. So in here, we are producing, we are using the same equation. Number one is equation uh, intensity equivalent to P over 4 pi R squared. Intensity equals to P over 4 pi R squared. But intensity number one, I1. Okay, I1 equals to power. Power is the same because there are only one source, power. Okay, 4 pi R, R1 squared. So, and then they go intensity number 2 using the same power. So, that's why power is not, uh, doesn't have subscript 1 or 2. And then in intensity number 2, you have 4 pi R2 squared. Okay, R2 squared. And then you can see here, we try to arrange that this equation uh, together because they are sharing the same P. Sharing the same P. So you can write down as I1 4 pi R1 square equivalent to P and I2 4 pi R2 square equals to P. Then we can join this equation to become this part. Join this equation. Then we can... Uh, um, cancel out 4 pi and 4 pi. What's left is just I1 R I1 square. R1 square equals to I2 R2 square. So these are the very good uh, equations to understand the relationship between distance and also uh, intensity. The larger the distance, okay, the larger the distance, the uh, the, the smaller the intensity. Intensity will depend on the distance, R. If the R is decreased, then I will be increased. So in this case, for the butterfly number one, number two, which butterfly will hear a very loud, uh, a, very, uh, a very high I? Definitely butterfly number one. Okay? Because it really depends on the distance. So the intensity with distance from a point source is given by P power over 4 pi R square with the units of what per meter square. Okay. Okay, let's look at one another example. We have the power of song, right? Two people relaxing on a deck listen to a songbird sing. One person, only one meter from the bird, this person. Okay, so this is one meter, eh? one meter. This is bird. Here's the sound with an intensity of 2.8. 2.8 10 power of negative 6 watt per meter square. Now the question is, what intensity is heard by the second person who is 4.25 meters? 4.25 meters from the bird here. Okay. So 4.25 meters from the bird. Assume that no reflected sound is heard by either person. That means you have eliminates all the negligible other sounds. What's left is just the song bird sing. <coughs> okay. So you can use that I. Okay. I1 R1 square equivalent to I2. R2 square. This equation in order to get I2. Because the question asks you about the intensity of the second person. Okay, again, using some distance. So you can get 1.55 10 power of negative 7 watt per meter square. 
assume that no reflector sound is heard okay what is the power output of the bird sound what is the power output of the bird sound okay so we have we have already uh, we already have intensity which means intensity number 1 will be equivalent to intensity number 1 equivalent to i1 equivalent to p over a1 okay, the area number 1 so the area is given by 4 pi r squared remember the area is 4 pi r squared right and then you have 3.52 and power of negative 5 watts and also okay you can calculate using the uh, uh, intensity number two which using 1.55 4, 4 pi times 4.25 square so again you can see that the power output is the same yeah, to the both uh, listener okay both people okay that means people number one will have a, a greater power a, 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 the same power as people number two the different only is just the distance from the source of the sound in this case the song bird scene <clears throat> so bats again i want to highlight a lot in terms of bats can use this decrease in sound intensity to locate small objects in the dark to communicate with the other bats okay in order for them to hit uh, each other maybe uh, they are hitting each other we don't know eh? because we don't have much time to 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 calculate or to 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 see what happened in the dark okay but we know that the bats okay will communicate okay will the bats will communicate definitely communicate to each other using uh, sound intensity <clears throat> so these are some sound intensity you can see at this point eh, from the table the intensity look at the unit watt per meter square okay so you have some jet plane at 30 meters okay jet plane at 30 meters a threshold of pain threshold of pain one watt per meter square this threshold of pain i i want to highlight it one is threshold of pain and another one is threshold of hearing Okay, just highlight it uh, first, then you can, uh, okay, highlight, just highlight it, at least to know what is the threshold of pain and threshold of hearing. Okay, a loud rock concert is just one watt per meter square. Siren at 30 meters, one times 10 power of negative two. And it, you can see here, until the threshold of hearing, threshold of hearing contain intensity at 1 times 10 power of negative 12 watt per meter square and well at the threshold of pain is just 1 watt per meter square so normally uh, there are a lot of questions containing threshold of pain and threshold of hearing okay because threshold of pain and threshold of hearing, and of hearing doesn't given in the appendix maybe okay I, I should, okay i'll try to check it check it first because this one okay can always be uh, uh, asked to you in terms of its intensity okay maybe using the intensity of the threshold of pain and hearing you may find another power of okay so there are another term Uh, we will see another sound intensity. When you listen to a variety of sound, a sound that seems twice as loud as another is 10 times more intense. Therefore, we use a logarithmic uh, scale to define the intensity level. Okay, before this, we have learned about sound intensity. Okay, sound intensity. before this which is i equivalent to p over 4 pi r square that is sound intensity the unit for sound intensity is what 
per meter square. Then comes another definitions of intensity. Okay, this is uh, another type of intensity. You can look at this table. Okay, you can see that there is some intensity level. Get the intensity sound, sound intensity at the unit of what per meter square. What happens at the next part? Sound level. Okay, and the unit is dB. dB. What is the unit of dB? Decibel stands for decibel. Okay, dB is a decibel. All right. So what is the intensity level? All right. So the intensity level is another intensity for the sound. But right now we are using some scale of the Lego, uh, logarithm. Which means the intensity level is beta equivalent to 10 log of I over over I naught. Where I is what? I is the in intensity and I naught is the threshold of hearing. What value? I not equivalent to 1 times 10 power of negative 12 watt per meter square. That is the value of the intensity level. Okay, you can see here a lot of values of decibel from eardrum, jet or a uh, jet taking off. Okay, this is the threshold of pain. Threshold of hearing here. That means at the threshold of hearing, the intensity level will be zero. Zero decibel. Okay, the intensity level will be Z, zero. Okay, look at how uh, we can use it in the example. A crying child emits sound with an intensity that is equivalent to 8 times 10 power of negative 6. Look at the unit. 8 times 10 power of negative 6. Your unit is what per meter square? Definitely, this is what? This is in intensity. Remember, you have intensity and you have intensity level. Find A, the intensity level. Uh, look at the words. The intensity level in decibels for the child sound. So how to use that? Okay, remember, intensity level is beta equals to 10 log I over I naught. And remember, this I naught is the threshold of hearing. 1 times 10 power of negative 12. Okay? So you can use this value, put it here. And what's left is you can uh, have 10 power of 6. So this one... You can cancel out what over what per meter square and 10 power of negative 6. Okay. Divide. Divide means you can uh, add. Okay. You guys can, can minus. Minus with negative 12. So 10 power of negative 6 plus 12. 10 power of 6. So 10 log uh, 8 times 10 power of 6. So you can derive it like this. 10 log 8 plus 10 log 10 power of 6. So the answer is 69 decibel. You can use your own calculator. 69 decibel. Okay. Because in logarithm, if the log of uh, the value 8 times, so that means here we can add log 8 plus with the log 10 power of 6. Okay, so I think this one is, is uh, you get 9 and this one is 60. So 60 plus 9, you get 60, 69 decibel. Okay, what happened is in part B, the intensity, the intensity level for this child and this in its sweet. okay, both crying. Both crying, 
with identical intensities. Okay, so this is uh, part A, and this one they have contained uh, twins, kembar. The intensity level, but with the same intensity. So you just multiply here, two times intensity. So you can derive like this, then log two, okay, plus with then log i over i naught, right? Okay, because you can uh, divide it with two, two times, and then this one we have already calculated in part A, so it's equivalent to 69, and then we only left just to calculate this part, which is 10 log 2 is equivalent to 3. So the answer is 72 decibels. Okay, 72 decibels. So that's how you use some alga, like logarithm Okay, in this part, a little bit algorithm. Okay, it's not uh, it's not uh, uh, hard compared to the one that you did in the uh, SPM level. Okay, it's just a simple one. Okay, I think we should take a break first before we continue to the Doppler effects. Okay, stay tuned.
Okay, so let's continue uh, on the Doppler effects. Share the slide. Okay. So in sound, uh, when we're learning about sound, okay, we cannot avoid to learn about the Doppler effects. So what is the Doppler effects? One of the most common uh, physical phenomena involving sound is the change in pitch of a car horn as the vehicle moves past us. So the Doppler effect is actually the, the situation where you actually can hear uh, some sound, okay, when it reach, uh, when it comes to you, okay, closer to you, you will hear the sound is uh, uh, contained very loud okay in terms of sound very loud sound but when the source of the sound for example if you uh, if you are in the car in your car maybe so maybe you can hear some uh, uh, ambulance or maybe the police car okay that coming towards you you can know that okay it's actually the car the, the ambulance is, is, is closer closer it's nearer to you because due to the sounds that you hear because it's actually come uh, a very um, okay, plahan, very subtle, okay, and then finally, makin dekat, makin kuat, makin kuat, makin kuat, and finally, dia reduce, dia makin kurang. Bila dah, uh, ambulance tu dah jauh dengan kita, dan kita dengar dia lagi plahan. So, this is Doppler effect, okay. So, when we just discussing about Doppler effect, okay, you cannot, uh, uh, you, you cannot, uh, you can you you must uh, remember what is the stationary source what is the wave speed and observer speed okay so source observer and speed okay source observer and speed okay in first part is the moving observer okay the first part is the moving observer so what is the moving observer okay so that means uh, we have some observer, okay, but the observer is moving at some speed, okay, and obviously at uh, when observer moving some speed, okay, so with, with some speed, at towards the stationary source, stationary source, eh, towards stationary source. As first case, stationary source, but the source to the diam, okay, the observer speed will come nearer to the stationary source and move away after that. Okay, that means uh, the con true concept of the uh, Doppler effect is the, uh, we, should, we want to calculate. Okay, we want to calculate the frequency of the observer. Okay? The frequency, the, 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 the frequency F prime. And here we want to calculate the F prime. Okay? So the Doppler is you want to calculate the frequency of the particular time okay for example uh, the speed is coming towards the source speed is yeah, the, the the observer is uh, uh, try to uh, move nearer to the source and then what's happened okay definitely if there are if at one point let's say this point okay this point okay, point a and point b and let's say point c there are three points A, B, C. So, for example, uh, the observer speed, okay, the stationary source, the source will produce some uh, wave, okay, some waves from some speed, and the observers will hear at first the frequency of the observer, maybe uh, at this point, okay, the observer will hear maybe 20 hertz. For example, yeah, 20 hertz. But as it moves clearer, uh, move nearer to the uh, stationary source, the observer will hear some increase in that uh, frequency. So maybe he will hear 50 hertz. And then after it read, uh, after it left B point B, then it reach again. So maybe he will can hear 15 hertz. So you can see. As it moves nearer to the source, the frequency is higher. So that is our concept. 
You need to grab on that concept first Okay Frekuensi yang semakin dekat dengan uh, Source eh, Maksudnya semakin mendekati source Source itu sumber eh Mendekati sumber maksud dia Akan menghasilkan frekuensi yang lebih tinggi Dia bukan frekuensi lain Frekuensi yang sama tetapi frekuensi yang didengar oleh observer Remember? Okay Bila uh, uh, observer dengar frekuensi baru Dia akan dengar frekuensi yang lebih kuat Bila kuat maksudnya uh, value dia semakin tinggi So in this case uh, V and U are speeds and hence are always positive So the Doppler effect for moving observer So this is moving observer Is given by F prime equivalent to Okay One plus minus u per v times with f. So remember, this is one plus minus u over v times f. So this is the frequency of source. This is. Frequency of observer. U is the speed of observer. V is the speed of sound. Okay, so normally we, uh, if this happen in the air, so you can use three for three liter per second. And the unit is hertz or second negative one okay so why why positive and negative why plus minus that means if the observers is coming nearer okay coming nearer to the source so we can plus okay one plus u over v one plus u over v okay times f so that means you can have a, a greater value of Frequency. For example, if the frequency of source, frequency of source is always the same. For example, is let's say 50 hertz. Uh, try to uh, punch in your calculator. What happened when 50 times with value that more than 1? Okay, for example, 50 times 1.5, for example. So you may have the value that is greater than 50 hertz. Definitely. But is 50 50 kali dengan 0.8 so you can have the value of okay less than 50 hertz so that is how it done okay so that means the kalau kita tengok dekat sini 1 plus u that means ini u over v ni akan menghasilkan uh, akan menghasilkan decimal point so, one campur dengan decimal point mesti dapat one point something. So, bila dapat one point something mestilah speed dia akan jadi greater than 50. Maksudnya, frekuensi observer mesti lagi besar berbanding frekuensi of source. Tapi kalau one minus dengan point, u over v akan jadi decimal point. Okay. Satu tolak dengan point, dia mesti akan jadi point something. So, dia akan dapat jadi kurang daripada 50 hertz. Itu contoh yang paling jelas saya boleh tengok. Tunjukkan lah. Okay, the Doppler effects for moving observer. For example, here. Okay. These are the moving observer. Okay, look at the source is stationary. A street musician sound, the A string of his violin producing a tone of 440 hertz. So, this is the F frequency of the sounds. So what frequency does a bicyclist hear as he approach uh, semakin mendekati ataupun yang kedua recedes after the with the musician with a speed of 11 meter per second. Okay, tengok eh. Masa dia mendekati apa yang berlaku kita pakai plus. 11 bagi dengan 3, 3 4 3 akan hasilkan point. Point, satu campur point jadi satu point something. So, dapat berapa jawab value dia? 454 hertz. Maksudnya, 
frekuensi yang di, di bunyi, didengari oleh observer yang naik basikal tu semakin besar value dia sebab dia semakin mendekati source. Apa yang berlaku kalau dia menjauhi source? Tengok. Satu tolak. Sebelah tolak tiga per tiga empat tiga. Dia menghasilkan empat dua enam hertz. Okay. Tak apa jangan, jangan hafal lagi equation ni. Dia ada equation yang lebih senang nanti. Kita tengok nanti. Okay, tapi saya nak tunjuk dulu. This is the moving observer. Okay, so this are the moving source. Ha, ini yang selalu berlaku kat kita. Kita duduk diam dalam kereta. Tiba-tiba ada ambulans datang. Kita tahu ambulans tu semakin dekat atau semakin jauh. Berdasarkan bunyi yang kita dengar. Bila semakin dekat, bunyi dia semakin kuat. Dan bila dia menjauhi, bunyi dia semakin perlahan. So what can be done here? These are the equations. Okay, that means F prime equivalent to 1 over 1 minus plus minus plus U over V times with F. Again, F prime is the frequency of the observer. F ialah frequency of source. 1 ialah 1 plus minus U ialah per observers. Speed. Uh, ini speed of the observer and, Okay and then V ialah speed of sound Dia ada tiga keadaan dalam uh, Doppler tu Kita boleh tengok Number one is moving observer Number two is moving source And number three is both moving Kedua-dua bergerak uh, Okay so these are things Tengok eh dia tak sengaja uh, salah tulis negatif positif tu. Tak. Dia memang tulis negatif positif. That means if the if the uh, source is moving towards the observer moving towards eh, towards observer so dia kita akan pakai minus. Kalau dia moving away from the observer kita akan pakai plus. Dia senang je nak tengok dia macam mana. Satu bahagi dengan Uh, satu bahagi dengan nombor perpuluhan Kita akan dapat uh, Value yang lebih besar Berbanding satu bahagi dengan Satu point Yang ini kita akan dapat ku kurang Yang ni Kita akan dapat lebih besar daripada satu Mudah je nak tengok So sebab itulah This is uh, this are moving Towards This one move, moving Away Satu bahagi dengan satu poin. Katalah satu poin lapan. Yang ni bagi dengan kosong poin lapan. Yang ni akan hasilkan satu poin something. Yang ni akan hasilkan kosong poin kosong something. So kosong poin kosong something kali dengan dia punya frekuensi observer mesti dapat kurang. Kalau yang ni pula mesti dapat lebih daripada frekuensi of source. Okay. Ini dalam kes kedua-duanya positif lah. Okay. Nah, ni contoh dia eh. Cuba tengok. A train sounds its whistle as it approach a tunnel in a cliff. The whistle produces a tone of 650 hertz. Okay. Maksudnya ada orang, a train tu menghasilkan whistle, approach a tunnel lah, eh, tunnel. Okay. Then whistle produce ialah 650 hertz. So this is the frequency of the source. And the train travel with a speed of 21.2. So this ialah frequency of the source, moving source. Find the frequency heard by an observer okay, standing near the tunnel entrance. So, observer tu duduk diam je. Okay. Standing near the tunnel entrance. So, kita akan gunakan yang mana? Kita akan gunakan yang atas dulu lah. Moving toward the observer. Okay. So, kita calculate, letakkan value. Dapatlah Tengok eh. Satu tolak dengan satu tolak point. Satu tolak point menghasilkan point. One over point akan dapatkan value yang lebih daripada one. So definitely dia punya value dia akan jadi 693. Tengok. Asal dia 650 tapi didengar oleh observer because it's towards observer. Kita dapat 693 hertz. Okay. Look at the second part. <coughs> 
the sound from the whistle reflects from the cliff back to the engineer in the train. What frequency does the engineer hear? Okay, sekarang ni ada engineer di atas uh, train tu dan engineer itu mendengar balik echo yang dihasilkan. Reflect kan? Dia bagi sound pada tunnel. Tunnel tu ada uh, ada reflect, akan reflect balik when uh, sound goes. Jadi sekarang ni dah daripada moving observer daripada moving source, dia dah tukar menjadi moving observer. Ha, sebab observer yang semakin mendekati source kan, source akan jadi yang sound yang datang daripada cliff tadi. Ha, sebab tu dia pakai 1 plus u over v times f prime. Tapi f prime yang digunakan ialah 693 bukan 650 eh. F tadi. Ha, sebab f yang kita calculate daripada part A. So, juga menghasilkan value yang lebih besar 736 first. That's how you check your answers in the Doppler effects. When it, it, it move nearer, you move nearer to the source, definitely the value of frequency will be higher. When you move away from the source, the frequency should be lesser than the original frequency. Okay, what happened when you travel with both like this? Okay, so the moving observer and the moving source. Okay, so these are the equation for both movings together, which means it contains f prime equivalent to 1 plus minus u o over v over 1 minus plus u s over v times f. Okay, so this is how you when you connect between both. Okay, between both um, moving observer and moving source. That means the moving observer, moving source. You should look at the potential. Either uh, the 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 observer is good, is getting nearer to the sound or away from the sound. Okay, 1 plus u over v, okay, plus, and 1 minus plus u s over v. U, u o stands for observer, u s stands for source. Source, sorry, yeah. U s is the source speed. Okay. Right, so you have another terms of the words which means involving superposition and interference. What is superposition and interference? The concept of superposition is the combinations of two or more waves to form a resultant wave that is travel that uh, is refers at superposition. The wave travels, okay, a disturbance meets another disturbance so when it combine, it becomes superposition. Okay, the concepts of superposition. Okay, well, if two pulses combine to give a larger pulse, this is constructive interference. Okay, look at how it combines, so you will get a greater interference. So this is what we call constructive. constructive interference and if they combine to give a smaller pulse for example when crest meet throw so it will decline so this is what we call destructive <coughs> destructive interference okay so the concept is clear so when two dimensional wave exhibit at interference so these are the examples of the interference pattern. Okay, the interference pattern, these are the examples. Okay. So you can see here, the interference pattern, okay, can come in sound 
and also in light, light, light interference. Okay, today we're gonna learn about sound interference, and later on in the in, in, in second semester, in next semester, you will learn light interference. Okay, here. But right now we want to discuss about sound interference. In the interference, two things you should know: the constructive and destructive interference. How to know? So, how to get the constructive interference? Crash meet crash. Okay, crash meet crash. You can have constructive interference, or no meet no. You can also have constructive interference. How about destructive interference? Easy. Okay, when Crash, meet, throw. So this will get you destructive interference. How about throw, meet, crash? Yes, of course, it will lead to destructive interference. Okay, so crash, meet, crash, or throw, meet, throw will give you constructive. If destructive, okay, the sign is not the same. Uh, easy, okay. But in sound, <clears throat> okay, we uh, actually can have a constructive interference when we try to apply to some uh, uh, simple experiment like this one. Yeah, simple experiment when you have two speakers, speakers number one and speakers number two, and you try to um, try to uh, walk along this line. Okay, walk along this line. You can see, okay, you can hear at this particular line, you will hear a uh, sound, a louder sound, and less, uh, less, uh, and sometimes you cannot hear anything. Okay, maybe one point you will hear a lot, a louder sound, and one point you cannot hear any sound. Ada sekejap, ada bunyi, ada tak ada bunyi. Ni, point, point di atas ni. Okay. So this is what we call the point where you are having uh, to uh, uh, to see that or to hear some destructive interference and also constructive interference. Bila you boleh dengar, maksudnya point itu ialah point instructive, constructive interference. Kalau time tak dengar, itu ialah point di mana kita dapat destructive interference. Macam mana kita nak kenal pasti dia? Okay. Normally, constructive interference ni mengambil kira jarak ini. Okay. Contoh dia, we have source number one and source number two. Let's say you have point A, point B and point C. Okay. And then of course, you will get, yeah, uh, at point A, you can have some length. Length one and length two. Okay. When Length 1 minus length 2 give you 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, dan seterusnya. Okay, if the length 1 minus length 2 give you this whole number. Ah, saya cerita nombor bulat lah. It will create, it will give you constructive. Okay, but if the path length difference give you L1 minus L2, kalau kita tolak, tapi kita tak dapat whole number. For example, we have 0.5, kita dapat 1.5, apa-apa nombor yang bukan yang bukan whole number, so itu ialah destructive interference. Okay. Konstruktif mesti nombor bulat. Destruktif mesti nombor. Bukan selain daripada nombor bulat. Okay. In this case, at point B, the distance from source 1 is greater than source 2 by half a wavelength. Uh, biasanya dinamakan half of the wavelength of, ataupun bersamaan dengan wavelength. Okay. At point A, the distance to each source is the same hand crash mid crash does constructive interference at point c the distance from one source is greater than source number 2 by 
one wavelength. Uh, Sof nombor C pun kita akan dapat konstruktif. Konstruktif. Yang ni saja destruktif. Sebab B dia kata beza dia ialah half a wavelength. Separuh daripada wavelength. Tapi kalau uh, C kita akan dapat uh, dekat point A kita dapat zero wavelength. Dekat point C kita dapat one wavelength. So one, two, three, four, five. Lepas-lepas ni kalau ada lagi di sini atau di belakang ini juga dihasil, menghasilkan constructive or destructive appearance. Okay. Okay, now we look to the last part of the chapter which means, uh, which is a standing wave. Okay, so what is standing wave? A standing wave is fixed in location but oscillates with time. Fixed in location and oscillates with time. So, try to imagine wave on the string. Uh, wave on the string. Sebenarnya dia berkisar dengan interference tadi lah. Tetapi sebenarnya uh, dan gabungan dia dengan let's say kalau you ada satu string yang you ikat dia hujung ke hujung. Uh, macam gitar lah kan. Like a gitar. Okay. And then you pull this. Okay. Petik dia. Apa akan berlaku? Kita akan dapat tengok that string will contain like this. Ha, dia akan move ke depan, ke belakang, ke depan, ke belakang, ke atas, ke bawah. Laju lah eh, laju lah. Macam ni lah, contoh, macam ah this one, like this one. These are the concepts of standing wave. Maksud dia, wave yang dihasilkan pergi back and forth, pergi balik, pergi balik dan menghasilkan a pattern yang macam ni. Dia kadang-kadang boleh jadi macam yang nombor A, kadang-kadang boleh jadi macam nombor B, kadang-kadang boleh jadi macam C. Ada banyak lagi pattern. So, untuk wave on the string, kita ada tiga tiga benda yang kita akan terangkan. Yang pertama, hujung ke hujung tutup. Close end. Both close end. This is both close ends. Dua-dua tutup. Okay. Nanti kita akan tengok Open one end. Ah, ni dah ada. Nama dia open one end. Satu buka, satu tutup. Dan yang ketiga, last kali ialah both close, eh, both open. Ah, this one is open both ends. Dua-duanya terbuka. Okay. So in order to learn that the standing wave, okay, First, okay, we need to end, we need to set the ground rule first. So, these are the patterns set uh, for the op, both close end. Okay, bila ada string yang diikatkan hujung ke hujung, yang maksudnya ditutup uh, ataupun kedua-dua wave travel dalam keadaan tertutup, both close end, okay, di, di bahagian akhir, di hujung sekali akan menghasilkan note point, nama dia N, note point. Setiap kali dia hujung macam ni, dia akan hasilkan note point. Dan dekat sini, ada ada satu anti note point. Ingat kan? A stands for anti note point. N stands for note point. Okay. Tengok ya. Dalam uh, figure yang pertama, anti note ada berapa? Hanya A hanya ada satu. Dalam... Uh, Second apa dalam figure yang, se yang kedua Anti note ada berapa? Dua, satu, dua Tengok yang ketiga pula Anti note ada berapa? Satu, dua, tiga Okay So kalau kita tengok daripada jumlah anti note yang ada pada setiap gambar tu Dia bersamaan, dia tally Okay, we will tally back to the terms that we should know Okay, tengok eh Untuk anti note 1, yang anti note ada nombor 1, dia dinamakan first harmony. Untuk anti note yang ada 2, nama dia second harmony. Dan untuk anti note yang ada 3, dinamakan third harmony. Can you figure out if the anti note have 4 anti note points dalam uh, open uh, uh, close uh, close end or both close end? Maksud dia fourth harmony dan seterusnya. Okay. So the wavelength of the first harmonic is twice. Ah, 
the wavelength of the first harmonic is twice the distance between the walls. Okay, dalam cerita standing wave ni, yang paling penting ialah kita nak establish V equals to F lambda. Semua kena ingat V equals to F lambda. Untuk standing wave kita nak tahu what is V equals to F lambda. Kita nak tahu dulu apa dia F dan apa dia lambda. Uh, baru kita boleh masukkan F dengan lambda tu ke dalam equation Ingat, untuk setiap kes kita kena tahu apa dia F, apa dia, apa dia lambda. Macam mana nak tahu? Okay. Untuk both close end. Remember, first both close end. Okay, both close end. Nampak macam mana kita tahu ni dia. So, this is both close end. Lambda will equals to 2L. L tu apa? Length of the string. This is length of the string. 2L. Lambda equals to 2L. Okay. And then if we try to rearrange the equation. So, uh, now we have, uh, because we have already 2L. And kita nak tahu apa itu frequency. Frequency bersama dengan V per lambda. So, what is V? V, V lah. Okay, over lambda tadi berapa? 2 L. So, F Ya, yeah, 2 lambda. And this is for the first harmonic. Jadi, first harmonic bersama dengan lambda first which is 2 L. Okay. Uh, wavelength of the second harmonic sebaliknya ialah uh, ni ya. Eh. Kat sini dia ada L. Dekat sini dia ada L. Okay, tadi kalau dia, dia duduk separuh tadi bersama dengan 1L, eh 2L. Kalau dia ada 2, dia hanya ada 1L. Tapi tak, kalau kita nak susah nak faham, we just left this one with this, okay. Uh, untuk second harmonic, okay. Di sini saya nak mempermudahkan eh, cara untuk kita faham. So remember, untuk both close end, Lambda equals to 2L. Okay. And then frequency bersama dengan V over 2L. That's how we should know first. And then what happen is, if you want to calculate, so this is the F1, which means the hum first harmonic. First harmonic. Okay. Sometimes the first harmonic is called fundamental. Uh, first harmonic dinamakan fundamental. Kalau dia tak panggil first harmonic. How about second harmonic? Uh, second harmonic maksudnya F2 lah. So F2 senang saja, which is 2 kali F1. You calculate first the F1 and then you multiply with 2 so you get 3. How about third harmonic? Then you multiply with F1. 3 with the F1. So in words, Ini dia. Uh, so the thing is First you should know what is the F Kita nak tahu apa Bila belajar standing wave V equals to F lambda So kita kena establish the What is our F And what is our lamb, lambda So lambda is 2L F kita Ialah V over 2L Untuk F1 Kita kena tahu F1 dululah. Lepas tu nak dapat F berapa? F40, F50, F20. Semua kali saja F1. Simple eh. Okay. So that is the easiest way lah to understand both close end. Okay. So both close end. Macam mana kita nak tahu pattern dia? Senang saja. Okay. We look at the. Like let's say kalau it doesn't give you. Uh, ni dia just bagi you gambar. So you kata. Calculate the uh, F. For this harmony. Uh, so kita tahu dia ada berapa A. Ada satu. Ada dua. So masuk dia. Dia nak F2. Which is dua kali F1. What is F1? Dua kali dengan V over 2 lambda. Simple. Okay. Uh, so bila dapat daripada F. Boleh dapat dia punya lambda. Bila dapat lambda. Boleh kira dia punya L. Dan sebagainya. Okay, so that is both close end. Okay.
kita tengok kita jump kita jump sikit kita pergi kepada open both ends uh, open both ends okey dia sim, dia berbeza dia terbalik dengan both close end kalau kita tengok both close end dia punya dia punya cara dia lah dia macam ni Tengok eh Tengok kalau, sim, uh, kalau first harmonic dia Dia macam ni Ini dia tutup sini Maksud dia Kalau dia tutup kedua-dua belah Dekat sini N Dekat sini N Dekat sini A You look the different between Open both N So this is both Close N Ini dua-dua tutup Yang ini dua-dua terbuka Apa yang berlaku ialah Tengok pada tempat yang terbuka tu dia tak boleh ada note point. Ah, okay. Tempat yang terbuka, tak boleh ada note point. Tengok. Semua tempat yang terbuka, tak boleh ada note point. Mesti anti note point. So, bila dia start dengan anti note, ah, nampak cara dia lukis. So, in here, is called first harmonic. Ini first harmonic dia. Note point dia equals to one. Yang ni second harmonic dia, berapa note point? Dua. Yang ni third harmonic dia. Berapa, harmon berapa dia punya note point? Satu, dua, tiga. Okay. And dalam kes ini, lambda juga bersamaan dengan dua L. Lambda juga bersamaan dengan dua L. How about F? F equal to B over dua lambda untuk F point. Easy. Masa dah tahu lambda, dah tahu F. F sama dengan V over 2 lambda. Yang paling penting kita nak tahu. Bila diberi lukisan. Okay. Ini adalah berapa harmony? Frekuensi yang keberapa ni? Ini adalah frekuensi yang ketiga. Ini adalah frekuensi yang kedua. Ini frekuensi pertama. First harmony is first frequency. Second harmony, second frequency. Third harmony, third frequency. So macam ni pun sama lah. Kalau kita nak dapat F5. So 5 kali dengan V over dua and okay simple mana kita kali dulu dapatkan dulu first harmonic dia ataupun fundamental dia in order to get f5 okay so same situation but in terms of pattern dia berbeza eh? ingat pattern untuk both op, both uh, uh, open both ends dia terbuka di bahagian hujung memang macam tu pun tapi kalau dia tertutup dia mesti tak boleh ada anti note point kat hujung kalau dia tertutup, dia mesti berakhir dengan note point. Ha, macam ni. Okay. So, pengetahuan ini kedua-dua sekali, kita akan tengok dalam situation ini. Open one end. Ha. Open one end is special. Dia ada dua-dua sekali. Dia ada permukaan tertutup, dia ada permukaan terbuka. Tengok apa yang saya cakap tadi. Tengok eh. Bila tempat yang tertutup, open one end ni macam ni lah. Ha. Ni bawah tutup, bawah atas terbuka. Okay, tengok macam mana saya lukis dia punya fundamental. Fundamental will be like this. Okay, tempat yang bahagian terbuka ni dia mesti anti note. Tempat yang tertutup dia jadi note. Ha, dia jadi macam ni. Itu sahaja. Maksudnya sini ada satu A, sini ada satu N. Satu A, satu N. Okay. Dan yang special ya, kalau open both N dengan open uh, dengan both close end tadi tu dia boleh ada dalam semua value dia ada boleh ada pada uh, <coughs> n equals to 1 2 3 dan sampai infinity dia boleh ada n daripada 1 n harmonic Sampai N berapa-berapa. N seribu ke, N dua ribu ke boleh. Sama juga dengan both open. Open N. Okay, open both ends. Pun sama. Bilangan dia masih lagi N satu equals to dua, tiga, empat. Dan seterusnya sampai berapa-berapa. Tetapi, untuk open one N, dia berbeza sikit. Kenapa? Sebab kita tak boleh nak tak tahu. Okay, contoh dia tengok figure A. Ini N yang keberapa? Tengok figure B. Ini N yang keberapa? Tengok figure C. Ini N yang keberapa? Okay. So, cara dia lah. Okay. 
kita tengok kepada sisi ikan. Ha, saya tengok pada ikan. Saya selalu, tengok, saya selalu bagi tahu student cara dia lah kita kena tengok kepada uh, badan seolah-olah ikan. Like a fish. Eh? Fish uh, look like like this. Okay. So ini di consider sebagai satu. Okay. Sebagai satu. So kalau ada macam ni. Maksud dia ada dibagi satu. Ada berapa? Dua. Ada tiga. Kalau macam ni pula. Dia ada berapa kat sini? Satu. Dua. Bagi sini. Tiga. Empat. Lima. So kalau kita tengok. Cara dia lukis open one n ialah n equals to one dia tak ada n equals to two tak logik oleh dia ada n equals to two tapi dia ada n equals to three and afterwards n equals to five jadi okay the order in the open one n is like n will be equivalent to one three five seven nine will be all odd numbers all will be odd numbers. Dia tidak boleh ada. Kalau kata, uh, try to calculate n uh, uh, the third harmony. Possible? Yes, possible. To calculate the second harmony for open one n. Tak boleh calculate. Sebab dia one open, one close. Okay. So, cara nak calculate dia, ha, kita tengok kepada pattern ni lah macam saya cakap tadi. Kalau both n Uh, open both end ataupun close both end macam ni kita tak tengok kepada bilangan antinode bilangan ni ni A A ada berapa A? 3 ok ini ialah both close kalau bo open both ends macam ni kita tengok kepada bilangan apa? node point N N node point kalau satu ada satu not point, satu lah dia. Kalau ada dua, dua lah. Kalau ada tiga, tiga lah. Okay. Dan kalau ada lima, lima lah not point. Tetapi kalau open one end, kita tengok kepada pattern dia. Pattern di sisi ikan. Okay. Ini bernilai satu. Maksudnya kalau ada lagi sebelah sini, ini satu lagi. So kalau ada lengkap macam ni, maksudnya dia ada dua, dua. Satu, dua, tiga. So dia mesti, nilai dia mesti odd numbers. Then value dia berbeza sikit. Untuk lambda, value dia will be 4L. Uh, lambda will be 4L and frequency dia yang pertama mesti V equals to 4L. V equals to 4L. V, uh, F equals to V over lambda. So lambda equals to 4L. So dia akan start F1, F3, F5 dan seterusnya. So nak cari F3, 3 F1. Nak cari F5, 5 F1. So ini yang paling penting sekali. Okay. And in the end, that is how you did the standing. So, tengok satu soalan untuk Sandy Wave. One questions. And we'll try to get the easiest. Okay. Kami yang ada satu eh. Satu soalan untuk yang ada dulu. Okay. One of the harmonics on the string. Okay. Yeah. Examples 14.8. One of the harmonics on the string 1.3 meters. So, ini lah apa? This one is L. Okay. Has a frequency 15.6. Ini lah F. Okay. So, dia tak cakap yang mana-mana satu. Just F to 15.6 saja. The next higher frequency, higher harmonic has a high frequency of 23.4. So, ini ialah frequency yang lagi besar daripada itu, which is higher one. Okay. Find A, the fundamental frequency. So, ingat, nak dapatkan salah satu F, kita boleh calculate sebab F Uh, 1F uh, 23.4 Kita boleh bayangkan 23.4 hertz Yang sebelum tu ialah 15.6 hertz ha, Sebab dia kata next higher one Okay, ini kita tak tahu berapa Ini kita tak tahu berapa Jadi kita boleh assume dia Kalau kita tolak ini Kita akan dapat satu dia punya Frequency of the fundamental Okay So frequency of the fundamental is 
Okay, you when you calculated here, you minus twenty three with point four with the fifteen point six, you will get seven point eight hertz. So, but different dia kan? So different dia lah seven point eight hertz. That is the uh, uh, fundamental frequency ya, tapi frekuensi yang paling awal, paling asas dia F one. Okay, and then the question B is that the speed of wave on the string. Okay, speed of wave on the string kita dah bayar, belajar tadi. V equals to Okay, using the equation V equals to uh, F Okay, F uh, F times the wavelength. So, wavelength untuk uh, uh, close, uh, both close and ialah 2L uh, 2L kali dengan F So, you will get V equals to 20.3 meter per second. Okay. 20.3 meter per second. So, ini dia tak tanya kita soalan yang uh, ini apa, ini apa ya. Eh. For example, ini ini berapa N? Ini ialah 2. Okay. N yang kedua, ini N yang ke 3. Uh, okay. Tapi kita tak tanya lah soalan tu eh. Kita just nak calculate. Make sure you faham. The next higher harmonic menuma uh, beza dia menghasilkan fundamental frequency. Sebab kita tahu macam mana nak dapat fundamental frequency, we multiply uh, the numbers of the uh, of the n times with the fundamental frequencies. Alright. Here, look at last questions. Okay, last examples. An empty soda pop bottle is used to be a musical instrument in a band. Okay. In order to be tuned properly, the fundamental Okay, the fundamental uh, frequency of the bottle must be, okay, must be uh, 440 hertz. So, inilah fundamental frequency. This is like F1, 440 hertz. If the bottle is 26 meter tall, okay, tall eh, ini kesemu sekali lah. How high? Should it be filled with water to produce the de desired frequency? Remember, the the height of the bottle is twenty six meter uh, centimeters. Ini ya, eh, twenty six centimeters. So, yang dikatakan open one end ialah okay. Ini open, ini bagian open. Ini ialah close end dia. Ah, digantikan dengan air. So, inilah close close end. So, ini ialah contoh open open one end. Okay, inilah contoh open one end. So, nanti kita akan jumpa lah uh, yang jenis macam mana kan. Tapi yang ni kita tak tahu. Yang ni ialah frequency first. Okay. So, soalan dia how high? Uh, berapa L yang kita perlu dapat? Berapa L yang perlu kita dapat? So, ingat uh, untuk kes ini uh, lambda ialah atau frequency ialah V uh, v over 4L. Sebab untuk dalam dalam open one end lambda bersama dengan so kita replace kan 4L ni ke dalam bawah ni. Okay. So kita nak dapatkan berapa nilai L tu. So in words kita dapat V343 divide with 4 times dengan F. F ialah fundamental frequency 440 hertz kita boleh dapat 0.195 bersama dengan 19.5 cm. Okay. So, 26 cm tolak dengan 19.5 kita dapatlah 6.5 cm. Jadi soalan dia ialah, itulah soalan dia. Dia minta, uh, how high should it be filled with water? Berapa tinggi dia? Berapa H yang diperlukan? Untuk kita isi air supaya L dia menjadi 6.5. Okay. So, that's how it should be done. Okay, I think that's all for today. Alhamdulillah. Try to finish everything. Ada soalan ke? Tanya.